So ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the last session of the day. Um, and I think this is a, pr a pretty appropriate conclusion given the conversation we've had. Um, as you'll have heard me and others mention several times, a few weeks ago we hosted Michael Daniel and his White House, uh, or the White House uh, cybersecurity team to roll out uh, what's being called the, the Cybersecurity National Action Plan. Uh, and uh, as everyone here will know, a, a centerpiece of that action plan uh, was an executive order um, launching a, a bipartisan commission on enhancing national cybersecurity. It's subsequently been announced that Tom Donnellan and Sam Parmesano uh, are going to lead that work. Uh, and uh, while we would have loved to have had them here uh, today, um, they are beginning to ramp up. Uh, but we certainly have the next best thing, the, the guys who are actually putting together uh, the commission who can uh, give us a sense of, of how that work is going to go forward. Um, on my immediate left, I have uh, Cleet Johnson. Cleet's the Senior Advisor for Cybersecurity and Technology at the Department of Commerce, so working with Bruce Andrews, who you heard earlier. Previously, Cleet was the uh, Federal Communications Commission's first Chief Counsel for Cybersecurity. Uh, and prior to that, he was uh, up on the hill uh, as a staff member of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Uh, next to him, Kevin Stein is the Chief of Applied of the Applied Cybersecurity Division at the National Institute of Standards and Technology uh, Information Technology Laboratory. Um, he leads NIST's collaboration with industry, academia, and government and amongst his many other achievements uh, in, in recent years um, was the guy that led uh, the team that uh, took forward the so-called NIST framework. Um, so, Cleet, to, just to get us all situated, um, for the benefit of those people who didn't hear Michael Daniel speak, um, <laughs> can you just recap on the rationale for creating a commission, particularly at this stage in the, uh, the administration. Absolutely, and thanks to New America for having us here. This time we appreciate it. And um, I, I think the value of this commission is to take stock of where we are in the government and the private sector. After seven years of really intense policy making and partnership building in the Obama administration, building on uh, previous efforts in the, in the Bush administration in the, with the Cybersecurity National um, the Comprehensive Cybersecurity, National Cybersecurity Initiative, CNCI. Um, and, and here we are in the, in the last year of this administration. And the value of, of this commission is to take stock of where we are now that a, a number of foundational statutes have been passed, executive orders issues, issued, partnerships developed. Um, we need to take stock of where we are and uh, and then look ahead. Uh, and uh, the, the specific goal of this commission um, is for the next administration, the next Congress, uh, the, the citizens and companies that will, uh, that will still be facing cyber threats in 2017. Um, the idea is to, is to hand over to, uh, at, at, right at the transition of the, of the administration and the new Congress, a set of concrete, deliverable, uh, actionable recommendations that business leaders, government leaders, policymakers uh, can implement. Um, in, in some cases, it may be improving, course correcting things that, that have been developed over the past, uh, let's say, the decade that, that, that Kevin has been at NIST, uh, and the seven years that, that, that we've all been working on, on cyber policy in the Obama administration. And, and but specifically short-term uh, action items and long-term, uh, ambitious long-term leaps forward that, that have a horizon of you know, two, five, 10 years. Um, it's this mo moment of transition that we wanna have uh, concrete, uh, actionable recommendations that importantly have consensus from a diverse group of stakeholders. And that's the value of a bipartisan commission like this, a third of which will have been uh, uh, recommended by, uh, by bipartisan leaders from the Hill. So we, th we think there will be some buy-in and, uh, and consensus behind the actionable recommendations. So this is very explicitly an independent review, mm -hmm. um, but you are effectively the, the administration's point person for, for engaging with it. 
Um, what, what are the writing instructions you have been given in terms of how the administration intends to um, engage and sort of assist the, the commission as it gets going? Well, let me just be a good staffer, first of all, and note that it's the Secretary of Commerce who's, the, <laughs> who's named in the, in the executive order. I'm, I'm honored and pleased to, to serve her along with my teammates throughout the Commerce Department. But I'll tell you what her direction has been. And I, I, I think, and, but before that, I've, I'll just, uh, not to be too presumptuous, but I've, I think one of the reasons that the President chose the Department of Commerce, and specifically NIST, also named in the executive order, is, uh, are two things. One, one a process issue and, and other substantive. On the process side, NIST has proven through the development of the cybersecurity framework that it uh, not only uh, knows how to do this, but has, has delivered a successful public-private uh, collaborative effort that has the buy-in of the private sector, uh, that has consensus behind it, that has the trust of the, of the, of the people and companies out in the, uh, out in the uh, outside the beltway that are gonna be uh, implementing this. So as a process matter, NIST is, uh, is, is really good at doing just this, being an honest broker and a convener and, uh, and staffing an effort like this. On a substantive basis, and this is, this is something that I'll channel Secretary Pritzker, who is, before she became the Commerce Secretary for, or the Secretary for the Department that is the voice of American business in our government, she was, in many different iterations, a, uh, a business executive. And she sees these issues from the perspective of, uh, of, a, of a business executive, of a CEO, a board member. Um, and you heard Bruce earlier talk about uh, seeing this challenge as a whole of society, business, government, collaboration. And I think that, uh, yeah. that um, Secretary Pritzker would say that the companies, their boards, their CEOs, their IT departments, um, but you'll never let the CEOs and, and boards off the hook. They are the front lines of our country's defense on this issue in a way that truly no other national security threat in our past uh, has, has been similar to that. So she sees this as a, as a business-led, business-government collaborative effort um, that is inherently market-oriented because it has to work for the market, it has to work for consumers and and the businesses that are, that are directly exposed to these cyber threats throughout the world. Um, so I, I, on a substantive basis, and Bruce laid out the, the sort of the elements that she sees as, as important in, the, in this business government collaboration. Have, first, having a common language. Thanks to Kevin and the team at NIST for, for facilitating the development of that common language of risk management. Second, having technical solutions that can be disseminated quickly and, and uh, efficiently to all, all who need them in government and, and elsewhere. Um, and third, and this is something that she hits in particular because, again, as a, as a business leader uh, who is not a technical computer scientist, um, she, needs to, she, she knows that business leaders and boards, in order to manage this risk, need to have, uh, hopefully, eventually, quantifiable metrics by which they can manage this risk so that they know that a dollar of cybersecurity investment equals a dollar or more of cyber of actual cybersecurity. And that goes for the government and the private sector. We need to know what we're spending and why and, and the, the the measurable effect it has. So those are the elements of this of th that she is is uh, continued to reiterate through the beginning of this process. And uh, I expect she'll continue to have interest in those in those issues. Um, but bottom line, business government collaboration is uh, is what we think uh, is, is the guiding principle of this effort. Thank you. Um, Kevin, you're at the front line of operationalizing this. You, you've sort of been here before within this framework, but uh, this has uh, other aspects to it which, which I think make it particularly challenging, but also particularly interesting. Um, first question, just in terms of the work plan, uh, how do you see this, uh, the work of the commission going forward? It's quite a sporty timeline to get a report out by December. How are you going to achieve that? 
so I, I think when we look at the, the executive order and the charge that's in front of us, we really kind of look at it in two large buckets, if you will. Um, one, you know, broadly improve cybersecurity throughout the public and the private sectors. Again, a very collaborative approach uh, to, to address that. And then the second would be really to position us as a society to uh, securely take advantage of advances in technology, in, in management practices, in, in IT service delivery. Um, so that we can adopt those in, in both in the private sector and in, in uh, you know, at all levels of government as well, not just federal, but state and local and, and others. Um, and that's a pretty tall order. Um, I think as, as Cleet mentioned, as well as uh, Deputy Secretary Andrews, uh, you know, the, the ultimate objective here is to produce uh, actionable recommendations that both business and government can act on. Um, and, and that's certainly not enough. I think that, that becomes the, uh, the, the end of the beginning, if you will. Um, where then the hard work becomes taking those actionable recommendations, both short-term actionable recommendations as well as long-term, uh, the word Cleet uses is the right one, I think, long-term, uh, more ambitious recommendations, really pushing the envelope in terms of kind of the, the technology and the use of technology uh, in a secure manner um, to really, uh, for, for the, the, across the digital economy um, and, and within the government as well. Um, so there's certainly a lot that we learned from the, the process to develop the cybersecurity framework, uh, and a lot of those uh, same tools are at our disposal this time as well. Um, and when you think about NIST, just you know, from a, a little history perspective, we've been at the, the cybersecurity business, if you will, for probably close to four decades. And I think one of the constants throughout our, our, our time uh, in this space has been that notion of collaboration, and open and transparent engagement with industry, with other government agencies, and then also you know, our, our partners around the world. Um, so today we have two commissioners, and, and while we're waiting for the full slate of commissioners to be uh, selected and announced, um, we're getting our own team in order internally. Uh, the commission's gonna uh, operate as a, a federal advisory committee, so there's certain uh, actions that have to happen uh, uh, to, to get that uh, structure in place, and those things are, are working through, uh, kind of the way through the process right now. Um, we envision, uh, uh, certainly, uh, as the slate of commissioners is uh, in place, uh, really going into much greater detail with them on the work plan. Ultimately, this has to be a work plan that will uh, which they can support and something that, that we'll be able to kind of charge forward together. So certainly over the next uh, several weeks to month or so, I think there'll be more details that we can share uh, in specificity. What, what You spoke about stakeholder engagement. Mm -hmm. I mean, based on your experience so far, what, what is that going to look like? Who are you going to be engaging and, and how? So that, that, that's a good question. So I, I think... Um, when you think about, I mean, the who, when you think about the diversity of the cybersecurity landscape, uh, it, it impacts everybody, regardless of whether you're in or out of the critical infrastructure, whether you're in government or in industry or academia or whatever the case may be. Uh, so there's certainly a, a, a need to reach out uh, kind of early and often to a very uh, uh, diverse set of stakeholders. Um, but what we have here, and we had it with the framework uh, development as well, is really a, a great opportunity to create kind of greater synergy between uh, and a stronger relationship between the government and the private sector. Ultimately, as these recommendations are established with input from the broad set of stakeholders in and out of government uh, and industry, um, those that input, those experiences, that feedback, and this is you know, spelled out in the executive order as well, those are going to inform the commission and the recommendations that come out as a result. Um, our approach has always been to engage early and often, uh, you know, the, the full gamut of stakeholders, uh, really encouraging folks to contribute uh, and be a part of the process. We want them to be heard. We want to take that input, much like we did with the cybersecurity framework process, and have that inform the commission as they make their, uh, kind of deliberate and make their recommendations uh, to the president. Um, what we found with the framework effort is that, that uh, as, as valuable, uh, that, that stakeholder engagement is extremely valuable. It, it takes a lot of effort to do that uh, on both sides, but it, it certainly leads to greater reception, and certainly in the case of the framework, and we think it will here as well, greater reception of the end result, um, and really support of the end product to the point where those recommendations that come out of the commission become things that the community as a whole can embrace and act on uh, accordingly. Um, and again, as I mentioned, we have a lot of different tools at our disposal. I mean, the executive order specifies a few that the commission could take advantage of uh, in terms of public meetings, in terms of you know, original research or commissioning other studies and things like that to help inform them as they chart through this process. Which um, leads to the question, sort of, what does success look like? 
Um, and I guess at some levels that sort of will, uh, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. But uh, as, as you start this process, you've begun conversation with the chair, the vice chair. Um, wh wh what do you think you will be happy with um, come December um, w when it comes to sort of producing the, the final report? So on December 1st, uh, you know, it, our, our very initial success measure will be we will have a set of recommendations to provide, actionable recommendations to the president from the commission. Um, while that, that seems like a fairly, fairly easy success measure, it, it's certainly not enough. Um, for, the, 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 for this effort to be successful, we have to have the, the kind of immediate support and adoption or, uh, or action around these, these recommendations um, by leaders both in government as well as in industry. And that's where a lot of that uh, stakeholder engagement throughout the process, as we've seen in other engagements, uh, will pay off as folks are participating in the process, uh, contribute uh, to inform the commission as they develop the recommendations, uh, there, there's a greater sense of, uh, of ownership uh, and, and action that come from that. Um, we'd like to see kind of creation of uh, constituencies around different, uh, different recommendations, uh, whether that be uh, new bodies or new coalitions forming around a particular uh, recommendation or two that makes sense to them and, 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 and seeing some immediate leadership in those areas, or existing bodies, existing uh, organizations, uh, uh, multi-stakeholder organizations, for example, that can take some of these recommendations and fold them into their current work processes to help them mature in that way as well. Um, I'd like to see, uh, you know, greater advances in, in kind of, uh, the, kind of the, the collaborative approach uh, to addressing cybersecurity um, across all of society. Uh, we'd like to see kind of that, that culture of cybersecurity kind of be, be ingrained in, in, you know, not only the hearts and the minds, but the actions of not just government agencies and, and, and companies in the private sector and academic institutions, but really individuals, the consumers in the world as well. Um, all across the digital economy. And I'd say the, the last one, and this is certainly something that we saw as an output, uh, kind of an added benefit of the framework process, was really that you know, the, the, the recommendations and the process to develop these recommendations really being a positive influence on kind of that, that cyber dialogue across the country, not just within an organization from kind of the, the C-suite and the board of directors to the bits and bytes folks, and also with their partners and suppliers, but within sectors, across sectors, and really reaching, you know, you know, tremendously far across, you know, all sectors and segments in the digital economy. So two last questions from me, um, which link to the, the two themes of our conference. Um, the first question is around um, diversity and inclusion in the workforce. Um, two sub-questions. Firstly, when, as you're putting together the commission, um, what level of confidence can we have that sort of diversity will be a, 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 an, an opportunity taken there? Uh, and, and secondly, in terms of sort of workforce issues more generally, um, is, is this something that, that is going to be included in, in the work of the commission? I'll, start. I'll take the, um, the first and then uh, turn it over to, Ke to Kevin for the second. Um, I, I, I think the, the, in the, to go just to the text of the executive order, Substantive diversity is built into the, uh, into the executive order about the, the qualities that the president will be looking for in, uh, in, um, in naming commissioners. So uh, I, I fully expect, as Kevin said, only the chair and vice chair have been named at this point. There will be four uh, recommended by the Hill and then six more by the president. Um, I think we can expect those to be in place and announced Within, within weeks, not certainly not months, um, and uh, it, the, we fully expect that, that that in in every way the, uh, the the full slate of commissioners will represent a broad and varied diversity of of expertise, of perspectives, of what this challenge looks like uh, in America, um, and uh, and you know I think this is the this is speaking as a uh, as a uh, as a citizen who voted <laughs> for this president, um, I, I I think he values uh, above all else not having echo chambers where there's uh, you know the, where there's group think of, in one direction. He wants to have uh, a diversity of perspectives. I, I think we can expect that will be the case on the for the commission um, as for the workforce issue. I think, you know, on the commission itself, though, I think the diversity of, of thought and perspective is going to be key when you think about the, 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 the scope of, 
of the cybersecurity challenge and, and you know, the, the technology issues, the people and the process issues. Um, ha having a diversity of experiences to be able to inform the activities of the commission uh, and really providing input into the recommendations that come out and then the action on those recommendations will be tremendously valuable. Um, in terms of the workforce, uh, you know, that's something that, that, that is near and dear to our heart at NIST. Uh, we, we actually lead the, the, the program office for the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education. Uh, and, and one of the tenets of, of that initiative, uh, the acronym is NICE, uh, if, if you didn't know that, um, uh, is really to, uh, to, to focus on uh, you know, uh, addressing that cybersecurity workforce pipeline need of the future. And to be able to do that, we have to encourage uh, a much more diverse uh, 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 workforce to be able to, to, to fill that pipeline need, uh, not just in terms of uh, uh, minority populations and un underrepresented populations, but others that come from uh, 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 different uh, life experiences, uh, whether it be uh, uh, veterans or others kind of returning, uh, maybe uh, folks doing kind of career shifts, if you will, uh, career changes, mid-career, or late career, uh, as well as looking at different strategies and, and tools or capabilities um, to get younger folks in, excited about cybersecurity as a profession uh, and get them into the workforce with, uh, with valuable skills uh, earlier uh, in the process, whether it's uh, not just requiring, say, a two- or a four-year degree, but maybe certifications coming out of, uh, coming out of high school or, or, or shortly thereafter. So there's a lot of different strategies to not only address that pipeline need, but also do that in a way that's taking advantage of the diversity, uh, 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 kind of the demographic diversity, but also the diversity of experiences and thoughts as well. Final question from me, and I'll open it up briefly to the floor. Um, our, our other theme today is securing the uh, future cyberspace. So uh, as uh, Tom Fanning, one of our speakers, said earlier, skating to where the puck is going to be. Um, as, as you put together this commission, how, how do you future-proof it? How do you ensure that this really is going to be, uh, in fact, as the executive order says, looking out? over the next 10 years and, and um, giving us some uh, activities, ideas, recommendations that, that take us to where the puck is going to be. So I, I think in some ways that's it, the, the value of, of reaching out to uh, the, the organizations and industry is going to be, you know, what does your technology roadmap look like? What are the things that you're planning for over the next two, three, five, ten years and beyond. We, you know, they're thinking about that now, and really soliciting input from them to see, okay, what are the technology trends you're seeing? You know, where are you putting your engineering resources? Where are you putting, uh, you know, putting your money, basically, in terms of where that is going? Um, understanding those trends, understanding, and then trying to unpack those trends in terms of what are the, 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 the policies, the, the, the practices that we need to be putting kind of the pieces in place today so that when those trends become... Uh, kind of go from future trends to, to current activities and actions, that we have a lot of the pieces in place to be able to support those in the most secure and, and usable way uh, you know, across the board. Cool. I'm just going to take um, one or two quick questions if uh, anyone has anything to ask. Um, gentleman in the center. Sorry, Dave. I day prayer from Politico. Um, so, how much money do you want to bet that the next administration just ignores this? <laughs> Clay, I, I think actually that that gets to what what is success here, um, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll 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 channel something that 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 um, Bruce Andrews and Kevin and I were discussing on his way out and our way in. Um, is that th think about we, think about the the 9/11 commission, which which unfortunately happened after a great catastrophe, um, but it what the way they set the way they set up the 9/11 commission was with deliverables that were actionable, and could be were and held people accountable, government leaders, congressional leaders, uh, the you know the intelligence community f through throughout the government, um, and there, there's some value to 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 Kevin's point about what, could set, what success looks like, if, if there are actionable recommendations that have the buy-in of a broad diversity of business and, um, and, uh, and security leaders, um, 
and, and through this year-long process at, at, the, at the point of transition um, is, is kind of handed over to the next Congress, to the next administration, and importantly to the, to the business leaders and market leaders uh, in, in early 2017. Um, it will, it, the success may, may uh, come in the form of, are you doing these good ideas? Are you implementing these short-term uh, uh, recommendations? And uh, are you aiming at these long-term leaps? Um, and if not, why not? Um, and that, that's the, that, I think that's, the, that's the, what we're aiming at in terms of building, not just buy-in, but as Kevin said, advocacy through this process um, of, of developing these consensus, uh, um, you know, broadly supported actionable recommendations. Um, so uh, I'm not going to make any bets about what the world looks like in January, but, um, but I, I think that our goal will be to hand over actionable, achievable recommendations that have not just buy-in and support, but advocacy. So it will, it will create a, a sense of accountability uh, among business leaders, you know, political leaders, and, and policy makers. That, that feels like a perfect note to end on. Um, and, you know, Washington can be a very cynical town. Um, and, you know, there are, as many people in this room know, a, a long history of cybersecurity commissions, um, some of which um, haven't been listened to perhaps as avidly as, as they have done. But um, just to say, you know, much. Citizen um, accompanied the announcement of the NIST framework, which I think has uh, subsequently been shown to be a great success, uh, at least in terms of the, the process that, that, that got us to where we are now. Uh, so, you know, we at New America look forward to um, supporting the commission anywhere we are, and uh, good luck over the next uh, 10 months. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Okay. <laughs>